All right. Hello, everyone. It's 5.15, so we're starting this week's webinar on our resource education materials. Perfect, Tatiana. Everything is okay. You can hear me. Very good. <clears throat> so, as the invitation stated, there are a few things we're going to do today. I'm going to give you a quick materials update on some new activities we've developed and we've added to the website. It's to answer a few of your requests. And then I'm going to continue uh, on soft skills, advanced communication techniques, because, well, I just gave uh, a, a speech on soft skills and cultural aspects of communication at Trendy 8. And there were a lot of teachers who asked me where I get the materials on our website. And to get some a quick idea, first idea of how to introduce the first soft skills in your lessons. So today we're going to talk in particular about the soft skill of implying in English. And specifically, it's a very good teaching technique to, uh, for students to really master present perfect. So that's the plan for today. So let's start with our materials update. <clears throat> now, I got a few requests uh, over the last two weeks for writing activities. So I wanted to show you this because this is not new really on our website, but some of you might not be aware of how many writing activities we have already on the website. You see, right here, what you can do, you can search for writing activities here in skill and select writing. There are lots and lots of writing activities for various levels. But the request was in particular short, activ short writing activities that we can add to our lessons <clears throat> that will not require too much preparation and that will get students gradually to develop their writing skills. Let's not start with big writing activities like essays, things like that, reports for exams. We're going to feed our students regular short writing activities throughout the course to make sure that they develop this at their own rhythm and they develop this steadily. So you see right here, in target language, start typing writing. You'll see there are different topics, effective writing, linkers for writing. I want to focus on short writing activities that we can use in our lessons. So there are a few types of activities that I want to show you here. First of all, it starts with same beginning. You see here, same beginning, there are different types of activities, different activities called same beginning. This is for higher level. This is really to help students develop their creativity. <clears throat> so there's always a video explanation here that goes with it. It's on YouTube. The link is right here. The whole idea of same beginning is for students to write two different stories for one beginning. Mm -hmm. So here I'm opening the preview. Check it out. One of these activities, for instance, why is it slow to open? Come on. There you go. It was a cold day, but I wasn't paying attention to that. They write, you get your students to write a first story one week, and then the following week, you give them the same beginning, and they have to come up with another story. Mm -hmm. So that's for higher level. You have it right here. It's called same beginning. Mm -hmm. All right. They're emails. You see here? A lot of emails for various levels, okay? Short writing one, A2, B1, short writing one, B1, B2, B2 plus, C1, C1, C2. So I highly recommend using emails as well with your students. <clears throat> it's, it's these emails, there's no, you do not need to give your students a uh, word count. This is really at any level, you can adapt it. You can get your students to just answer emails 
naturally, the way they would do without an exam context, without exam instructions. So here, simple email. Hey, I don't know what to get Sarah for her birthday. Do you have any ideas? Best, Quentin. And the activity is basically, Stu, just answer the email. You can absolutely expand that. You see you have different fields. You can actually have this as an email thread, okay? Mm -hmm. So student A answers this first email, gives it to student B, and student B acts as Quentin and answers the next email. Mm -hmm. okay. Clear? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thomas, uh, how do they differ in levels? Two Very two good. Right. Two, two, What's the difference? <laughs> I wonder. So you see, here it was A2B1. We're, we're simply asking for uh, <clears throat> recommendations, ideas for a present. Now let's look at an email C1 level. Dear sir, madam, you hit my car, a blue convertible last week. I have it on video. Please write me back so we can figure out the insurance. Mm -hmm. So here you see the context is of different level. Mm -hmm. okay. You have you have vocabulary that A2 level students, I doubt they would know, convertible, a convertible car with, you know, cars without roofs, mm -hmm. figure out the insurance. I'm not sure at A2 level, students are ready to discuss insurance claims by email. Mm -hmm. Okay, let it be. Nice. All right. Uh -huh. Yes, thank you. Now, if you are preparing your students for exams, feel free here to add a word count. But we've left it open because really I, I use these throughout my courses throughout the year, not specifically focusing on exam preparation. So my students will answer quite a lot of these emails throughout my course. And the goal is for them to develop their writing skills, not at the last minute, all of a sudden, like, guys, in a month, you're doing your exam. So from now on, every lesson, we're going to write an email of 250 words. It's not especially natural. When I write emails, I never think about an, a, a word count, how many words I'm going to put in my email. Should it be long, short, things like that. Mm -hmm. Sorry? No, no. Of course. We don't Wait. think about number of words. <laughs> That's entirely up to you. Feel free to add that if you need. Because as you can see, there are pages and pages of email activities. Great. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, now we're getting to the third type of writing activities that I really wanted to uh, introduce as well. Our, our students, especially the, the, the younger generation, our students don't write emails actually that often in real life. What they do do is text. They text loads. And that is actually something that, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> that works really well with students, uh, getting them to act out text messaging. So, that really depends on your uh, classroom management and the rules in your school, things like that. Um, I'll always remember uh, a very nice uh, speech slash training or workshop from uh, Yelena Sarnavska, who's very good at that. She has a WhatsApp group for her groups of teenagers. Uh, you need the consent of parents, of course. Um, but she has this WhatsApp chat group with her students. And when she sees that uh, uh, students are not really into talking or maybe as a warmer, instead of speaking, she'll actually chat with them uh, during the lesson on that chat group. And it, it apparently, like, <clears throat> it's, it's a very good way to involve these teenagers. Mm -hmm. So if you do not, if you cannot open a WhatsApp chat group, never mind. We've prepared loads of text message activities and they work like a charm with teenagers and kids. It works this way. Why is it taking so long? So these text messages are gonna appear as simple, simple speech bubbles on a sheet of A4. This one starts, for example, do you know Bill? 
you pass it on to the next student and student answers in the next speech mm -hmm. bubble. No, I don't know, Bill. <clears throat> why? Student A answers. Don't, why don't you know Bill? He's the leader of our class. Oh, really? The next text message. Oh, really? Do you mean, do you mean Jack? No, no, I mean Bill. And you continue like that. It's, it's a text message system. Uh, students have loads of fun. They, they get to use their own creativity that they already have in their L1 in text messaging that they don't especially have in emails. Most of the time I see teenagers or, or uh, I see teenagers struggling with emails because they don't really know what to say because it's not especially a typical way of writing for them. When you give them these text message activities, you'll see of different scenarios. Let's look at the second example of this first text messages for a team. Do you want pizza for dinner? Answer my, answer my text. Imagine I just texted you. Do you want pizza for dinner? <clears throat> yes, sure. Yes, sure? What mm -hmm. kind of pizza? Cheese one. Cheese and tomato pizza. Tomato pizza. Cheese, cheese and tomato. Cheese. Yeah. That's Get a very here. simple. Uh, that's a very simple pizza. I'm, I'm, I'm in the mood for something a bit more uh, adventurous today. Uh huh. Okay. W what would you prefer? I, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking maybe pineapples. What do you think about it? Uh huh. Okay, with bananas for sure. Okay. Do you mind? So you see, we can continue back and forth like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the, the, the idea is that here, students, it's, it's almost a speaking activity, but students are doing it in written form. Mm -hmm. You can use that to focus on their, uh, uh, their spelling mistakes, their, their, uh, 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 their formality, their fluency in writing, and to build students up again. If, if you see students struggling with emails and you have enough time in your course, just start at the beginning of, of the course, start feeding them text message activities like that regularly. Mm -hmm. It's a good warmer, honestly. For sure. It's a very good way of warming up the class at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I like these a lot and there are loads. My internet is going a bit slowly. There are loads and loads for different levels. Here it's all the A2 ones, but you see there are three to 11 pages of these emails and text messages. Do you have any questions about these short writing activities? No, thank you. That's clear. Yeah, clear? All right. So let me continue our little new activities update. Now, two more things before we go into present perfect and implying. Mm -hmm. We were asked for more material.
There we go. I was muted. All right. Getting back to our new activity. So subject questions. We've added a teaching tips video for you. All right. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things you can find here. We've added P1s for subject questions, basic practice, matching and memory. But we are also asked to add some teaching tips. Mm -hmm. I think you remember, you can easily find all our teaching tips just through teaching tips. This link, okay, this tag, you click on tag. So you have teaching tips here. Mm -hmm. I'll take away subject questions. And you have loads of videos on how to teach different you see, linkers for writing, automating vocabulary, eliciting questions, likes and dislikes, modals of deduction, modals of obligation. So I wanted to show you that as well. There are loads of links to videos that give you teaching tips, how to introduce it. Practically all the videos are done by Tom, not me. You'll see in these videos, clear procedures, clear step-by-step -step instructions on how to introduce these target languages. Yeah. All right. right. Yeah, well, if it's an 18 year old, great. And last thing, modals of obligation. Oh. We've added a few activities here for modals of obligation. So you already know angry parents, babysitter interview. There we go. The presentation support. We have an activity to fire or not to fire. That's more for adults. Uh, basically, there's, a, uh, uh, there's going to be a discussion between the boss and the employee. Mm -hmm. And I really like this one for kids and young learners and teens. Babysitter interview. So here, students are going to have the opportunity to be parents mm -hmm. uh, choosing a babysitter, all right? So the way it works is this. Student A takes two parent cards. These cards describe the child that the student will talk about. Student B takes two babysitter cards. These cards describe what is important to the babysitter in a good job. Student A begins to interview student B for the job. <clears throat> they use their cards just as references, and that gives them the opportunity to uh, to fuel the conversation. So look at the parent cards. These are specific things about the child of that parent. Your child loves carrots and your child loves singing, for example. Mm -hmm. Your child hates playing outside and loves watching TV. Those two go well together. And these are the babysitter cards. This is what is important to the babysitter, what they want or don't want to do in their job. Mm -hmm. You hate washing clothes. Uh, you hate toys, you hate homework. So these are things that the babysitter will not be willing to do. The students are naturally going to use here models of obligation to describe uh, uh, their, the rules of the job that is mm -hmm. to be awarded. Okay. All right, this mm -hmm. was, these are the new activities for models of obligation. Yeah, and uh, how many cards can we choose? It depends on us or what? No, no, it was, uh, look, it was in the instructions. Mm -hmm. Students take two cards, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. Student A takes two parent cards. Student B takes two babysitter cards. Mm -hmm. The parent has two cards to kind of have an idea of who their child is. The babysitter has two cards to give them an idea of their character what they're willing or unwilling to do in their job. Okay. So, and, uh, uh, so it depends on us maybe to choose uh, in an open way or just to take the cards without looking at them. Yes. <clears throat> now look, uh, <clears throat> we've, we've, we've made the instructions as, as, um, as expanded and yet as flexible as possible. Yes. So look, we can be flexible. <laughs> if you need, this is a good buildup to the speaking part. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to have a more clear buildup to the activity, you can have the students brainstorm beforehand. 
Try asking questions like these and writing their answers on the board for reference throughout the activity. What is important for children to do? Mm -hmm. What does a good babysitter do? Mm -hmm. And what questions are good for this job interview? That way, the students will have a reference on the board. You see, we've put this activity at B1, B2 level. I would say B1 level students, you would want definitely to do this build up to speaking. At B2 level, this is probably not their first job interview type activity. They probably need less build up. Maybe. Okay, thank you for the comments. Sorry? Uh, it, somebody was asking something. What was the question? No, no questions? <clears throat> All right. Now, I want to get into implying in English and present perfect explains now. We've got, we've got a very nice... All right, let me, in target language, I highly recommend. Try present perfect explains now, okay? Mm -hmm. Type in the search simply present perfect explains the situation now. First of all, Again, there's a video, teaching approach, present perfect explains. There's a link here of a video that explains how we introduce this present perfect explains, uh, perfect explains logic. Because it works in all tenses. Past perfect explains the past. Present perfect explains the situation now. And future perfect explains the future. Let me show you an example. We're gonna open this basic practice So you see, in this basic practice, we give students the formula and the logic. How does it work? <clears throat> well, I like introducing this notion of present perfect ex uh, uh, explains now through, first through emotions. It's the most logical. So here, for example, we have in the past, why did you feel great? I felt gre great because I had slept very well. Why do you feel great? I feel great because I have slept really well. You can do this, you can continue th this logic with a lot of different feelings and a lot of different emotions. <clears throat> I feel hungry right now. Why? Because I haven't had lunch. Because, because <clears throat> I, I've, I've had a tiny lunch. Mm -hmm because I've worked a lot today. I've thought a lot and my brain needs food. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you can do this with a lot of emotions and you, you show the students the logic. I feel angry right now. Why do I feel angry? I've been having problems with the internet. My students have not done the task I asked them. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the hotel hasn't called me after the complaint I filed. Mm -hmm. All right? It, a very good way to introduce this notion is through emotions. Mm -hmm. And then you can start expanding on it because that is the logic behind perfect tenses. Whenever a perfect tense is used, there's, there's always something implied. Mm -hmm. So here, for example, we have more examples. They had lost my luggage. Well, what can I understand? If, if I just hear someone telling me they had lost their luggage, someone had lost their luggage, I could, I could, I could guess the following things about that person. Maybe that person was angry. Maybe that person was shouting at everyone. Maybe everyone was really thing in present perfect. I haven't met my neighbors. 
well, if a person says this in present perfect, I haven't met my neighbors, what can I, what can I guess from the context? Maybe the, friend, the neighbors aren't really friendly. Maybe they're new neighbors. Maybe the person who said it isn't friendly. Maybe that person doesn't really like meeting new people. There are a lot of things that, that we can kind of take out of a perfect. And there are loads of activities here that will help your students to grasp that notion, to really master it, to take it in. So I like this, for example, match the sentences with the pictures of the situations. He's won a new TV. He has never liked his neighbors. He had never played such a difficult game of chess. And the students will match it to the picture, the emotion in the picture. Mm -hmm. Next page. So you see, we start just with pictures to, for really the students to get the notion. Next, I love this. So we have, we give students examples of past and present perfect. The students need to quickly say if it's now or the past, and they need to, they need to make some assumptions about the situation. Mm -hmm. So for example, I've eaten some bad food. That's the present. All right. What can we guess about the person? I've eaten some bad food. <clears throat> Maybe that person is at the doctor's or going to the doctor's. Mm -hmm. That person can probably not come to the business meeting if we had a business meeting. Uh, what else can we guess about the person? What else can we assume? Just maybe he feels terrible now. Person probably feeling terrible now, maybe in pain. Mm -hmm. We hadn't seen each other. Number two, we hadn't seen each other for years. Now, that's not the present anymore. That's the past. So it doesn't explain anything about now. Mm -hmm. It explains something about the past within the story we're telling. So what can I assume? We hadn't seen each other for years. What can I assume? Well, maybe those two and people we met yesterday. recognize each other. Uh, yes. Yes, and we met yesterday. So we met yesterday. We hadn't seen each other for years. Mm -hmm. Maybe you didn't recognize each other because you hadn't seen each other. You didn't know how, you, how each other looked now. Maybe, maybe you hadn't seen each other. Maybe it's because you had some kind of fight or falling out a few years ago. Maybe one of you moved to a different area of the city or even to a different city or country. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things we can assume. And you continue here with all these situations. And again, this is really, really good for students not to just learn present perfect in all the different scenarios that are real throughout our textbooks. Uh, present perfect with already and yet, present perfect with for and since, things like that. Because in all situations, present perfect explains now. Past perfect explains the past. The students need to master that basic logic and then all the details behind present perfect all the little nuances and situation they'll understand them mm -hmm. next page so you see here we're mixing present and past perfect i like that as well because the logic is the same mm -hmm. on this for now. Is everything clear? Why is the activity taking so long? There we go. I wanted to show you the last page. So next, we're also going to talk about speaking activities to get students to play with that even more. Finally, what I highly recommend, so you see these are practice one level activities. What I highly recommend then, so you had students thinking about emotions and 
how they can imply emotions using present perfect. Then we made assumptions based on present or past perfect sentences. The next step is the opposite. Explain the following situations using a perfect tense. For example, he's quitting his band and getting a real job. The, the, for example, the band hasn't become successful after 15 years of trying. <laughs> or um, he, has, he has finally decided to listen to his parents' advice. Hmm. All right? Yeah. It's, it's, high, time. it's high time. It's high time to do this uh -huh. after 15 years. His hair was wet. How can you explain the situation using past perfect? His hair was wet. Uh, he had taken a shower? Anything else? Maybe because of rain. Very good. Umbrella. If, if you tell me, if you're telling me a story and all of a sudden you say it was raining and he'd forgotten his umbrella, I'm naturally going to assume that he got wet. Mm -hmm. The children were crying. Ooh, explain the following situation using a past perfect. The children were crying. Mm -hmm. They hadn't got the chocolates bars. Uh huh. Mom had refused to get them candy in the store. Yeah. Their favorite, their favorite cartoon had been canceled. There, there are a lot of different ways we can do this. And exercise four here, there's, <clears throat> there's a more concrete activity. Your friend Will is retiring from his job. You have to give a speech. You want to use present perfect or past perfect to explain a, following, uh, a few things about Will. So Will is a great friend. He helped me become a, great, a better person. We're close friends. He had a successful career. And he's excited about having more free time. Here, students have even have more freedom to play with the tense. Any questions or comments on these activities? Perfect explains. No. Everything, yes, everything was perfectly explained. All right. As I said, there's a video approach. And there are two basic practice for different levels. B1 here, we're going to keep it simpler. B2 plus, it goes more in detail. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, there's another activity I wanted to show you for present perfect in general that I really love. It works like a charm, and you're going to be amazed at how your students are going to get speaking using present perfect. There we go. This activity is called 10 fingers. Wow. Are there 10 fingers in the English language? <laughs> Sorry? Are there 10 fingers in the English language? Actually, I know that there are eight fingers and two thumbs. So all the rules, oh. say, it's even in tests, it's really difficult and, I don't know, awful. So how do, what's Honestly, I, I'm neither a doctor or a biologist or a specialist in any way. Yes. Uh, to me, thumb, no. Yes, of we, course, there are 10 fingers. I'm, I'm... We, uh, I met uh, this situation in the test for students for seven grades. Yes, how many fingers are there? And the answer was eight. <laughs> It sounds, that, that sounds like it, it's just someone trying to test students and, and, and trying to show them that they're wrong. Uh, I'm not an expert, but I would say there are 10 fingers. Uh, there are 10 fingers. Two of them are thumbs. That's it. Um, when we wrote this activity, we didn't think about that, honestly. But yeah. so it works. Uh, and I sur uh, surf the internet and uh, found the information that uh, actually <laughs> Englishmen don't call so thumbs as fingers or something like that. Really? Yes. You can try to find. Well, this is, this is, I think this falls into the category of subtleties of 
uh, the English language that, that actually will disappear because of the international aspect of English nowadays. So if, 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 all other, if to all other cultures, nations around the world, fingers means 10, then believe me, English will change and adopt that. Because nowadays, um, native speakers don't control English anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, there's a term globish, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. That exercise was in an exam. All right. No, some uh, control test uh, after the first part of studying in the linguistic school, actually. Uh, and it was in, inside the linguistic school uh, in the seventh grade. Okay, that's that's too specific. Uh, uh, maybe I don't know who is uh, I don't know who is the author of and this. Two of those fingers are thumbs. Okay, thank you for your comment. So let's get to the activity ten fingers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what we're going to do it's it's very interesting. It's this game is a lot of fun. All students hold up ten fingers, ten. and in turns. So it, it works the same with five if you have less time, basically. In turns, students say a sentence about their experience. So it, 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 can be, it can be about their experience using present perfect. It can also be about them explaining now. Mm -hmm. So I've been to New York. I say this phrase, if it's true about any of you, you take one finger down. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is find experiences that you have that are most likely common to the other so that their, their fingers go down faster than yours. And in the end, you can, you can, the, last, the last student with fingers uh, up wins the game. Uh -huh. You can also put a time and count the most fingers at the end to avoid going too far. Is it clear? Yes. Yes? You just yes. continue going around like that in a circle mm -hmm. and students gradually... Uh, so let's play very quickly j just as an example. So, uh, well, this is true about me. I've been to New York. Okay. Okay. Everybody who's been to New York, one finger less. Mm -hmm. No. All right. Now your turn. Say it. Someone say a sentence in present perfect. Um, I've been surprised today very much. You've been surprised today. Uh -huh. So have I. So have I. Okay. I'm two fingers down. Another one. Somebody else. I've been to Montenegro. Ooh, I haven't. I keep my fingers up. Okay. I put it down. So you see, we continue like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's loads of fun. Students really, they have loads of fun playing this. And you'll see that it, this, is, this is a P3 type activity. Mm -hmm. Students are quickly coming up with experiences from their lives uh, uh, or emotions that they're feeling right now. And they... Uh, they produce present perfect uh, uh, sentences. Yeah, it's real fun. We've also put this under camp materials because this is mm -hmm. a very easy, fun game to play at camps, uh, different kinds of projects, things like that with kids. You get them in a circle. Come on, guys, we'll play 10 fingers. Okay. You'll always get them excited about that. Yes, for sure. All right? Right. So that was 10 fingers. <clears throat> now we only have 20 minutes left. So continue exploring. If, if, if you just type perfect, you'll see that there are various different topics. There's also one specific past perfect explains the situation in the past. Mm -hmm. And we have loads of activities, supplementary activities to match the topics in your textbooks as well. Present perfect for uh, with for and since, unfinished time, life experiences, yet and already. All of them are there. Mm -hmm. What I want to show you now is 
getting to our soft skill. So you can find it like this, simply typing imply, implying in English. Implying in English will show you a bunch of activities like this that are really, these are communicative, uh, these are communicative skills. These are soft skills. And what I want to show you here is that you'll see that some of them, some of them are only for higher levels, but some of them go down in level because you can start introducing these concepts at an early stage. And this will put a bit more, this will put a bit of uh, um, subtlety, creativity in your lessons that students, students honestly will love and they'll develop their communicative uh, uh, skills a lot in English. Mm -hmm. Let me start with very simple, a brainstorm activity. We call this uh, basically ways to say. There are different ways to say things. And they, they stick to who they are in terms of formality. For not that many students, actually, they're comfortable actors and that, that will try to assume the role that they see in the activity. I was teaching, I had a few lessons this week with uh, uh, IT guys. That's quite typical of them. I, I, I love them. They're, they're, they're really great students. They're very smart and they're great at identifying uh, um, logics, at finding formulas, system, things like that. Having said that, one thing that they're, they're not very proficient at is adapting to the person they're speaking. They're practically always in their informal context because that is mainly what they're used to in their, um, at, in their teams at work. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do here is simply start with asking the students to brainstorm different ideas on how to handle different situations. So situation one, someone asks you what you think of the soup and you, you see B, I hate it. You generally, you really, really do not like this soup. How are you gonna handle the situation? So A, you're talking to a waiter waitress and you're in a bad mood. What do you say? Thank you, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, goodbye. You might, you might, you might ask for another soup. You call the waiter or it's waitress enough. and say, I, I, I cannot eat this. I, I, I asked for a real Russian borscht and this is not a real Russian borscht. Please get me another one. Situation B, you're talking to your best friend. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an entirely different situation. A, well, actually, it's not really the waiter or waitress's fault. They didn't cook the soup, but still, you're kind of in a bad mood, first of all. Second of all, you've paid for this service. So you're already, you're, you're, you're a bit more direct. B, your best friend, I mean, Borsch, come on, it takes hours to prepare from, I've never prepared it myself, but I've heard it takes a good amount of time to prepare. So, it's your best friend. You're not gonna. You're not gonna just throw the bowl of soup in their face, are you? Of course not. And last scenario, extremely formal. You're talking to the queen. Okay. Um, the queen, for whatever reason, the queen has decided to welcome you at Buckingham Palace, and you know very well that the queen didn't cook the soup herself. But still, it is her soup from her kitchen. Situation two, Joe is stupid. You want to say Joe is stupid. Now, scenario A, you're talking to Joe's mom. You're definitely not going to say Joe is stupid. B, Joe is your boss. You're talking with your coworkers. Now, coworkers, it depends on the relationship, but you want to make sure that nobody tells Joe afterwards. And C, you're talking to your friend, Joe's girlfriend. So again, three... 
a very simple sentence, Joe is stupid, but three very different scenarios. I love these brainstorm activities. It's a great way to get students to start playing with language, be more creative with language. And you'll see that here they'll play, for example, they might play with present perfect to explain now. They don't have to. Uh, Anton, uh, may, may I ask a question? Just for this, so, so we don't know how to be polite, maybe, or how to speak to the queen. And uh, uh, do you suggest uh, some hints here? Uh, so, all right, I, I, I see what yes. you mean. Yes, in this is a brainstorm activity, which means we do not give hints. Uh, a brainstorm activity is, is uh, a bit like task based approach where you first give the students the opportunity to express themselves mm -hmm. and then you adapt your lesson you you you, you give them tools to 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 do it even better yes. if you want if you want hints for your students if you want your students uh, uh to give your students help on how to do this mm -hmm. there's so, two very important p1s here mm -hmm. firstly implying in english strategies and exercises here yes. you'll have, I can open it, you'll have uh, uh, a more detailed and a more, a more analytical approach to it. This is more, this is a lesson basically. Okay. Uh, we'll go over, there'll be a long text and we'll go over different strategies, how to imply in English using present perfect, how to imply using conditionals, using uh, negatives. Yes. So here we're giving students a model to follow. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking about the mode of behavior. Does that answer uh -huh. Yes, thank you for your answer, of course. And uh, I'm speaking about uh, uh, the modes of behavior, uh, the etiquette rules, maybe. So, I mean this. Oh, we, we, we don't. <laughs> Honestly, etiquette rules, things like that, there's already. <laughs> It would... Loads of information on that in um, in textbooks. No way. Tom and I have not started doing activities based on that because, uh, well, personally, I find I find it this way. I don't think I don't think it's humanly possible to prepare students for every single etiquette and rule that exists in the English speaking world because. Once again, we are now in the age of globish. It's very difficult to predict what real life situations our students are going to find themselves in. They might, are, you might be teaching English to students that will never ever go to the UK and might never ever speak with a, a, an Englishman, a Scotsman, an Irishman. Uh, so I prefer, I prefer giving students strategies mm -hmm. so that they can adapt in real life to different situations. So these strategies, for example, implying in English, uh, flowery language, um, persuasion techniques, mm -hmm. how to answer questions. You'll see that there are a lot of advanced communication skills on our website. We never, so we never take a look at specific rules or etiquettes of one specific situation. We always take strategies, look at the broad mm -hmm. situation, um, the strategies that will work in human communication so that our students can learn the details of where they're going when they need it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Honestly, rules and etiquettes, even if your students don't learn them with you in class, they can look them up online. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. I know it makes, it makes for very interesting lessons. Uh, yeah. uh, so um, we can play with this topic a lot. Actually. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. You'll find all that in textbooks. Okay. I would recommend as well, you know what, rules and etiquettes. 
I've seen I've seen good materials from uh, uh, Artyom Morozov's uh, group mm. Mishki yes. on Vkontakte. He has good materials. He will look more in detail. Uh, Katerina Slashevskaya, Kate Canon. So Katerina Slashevskaya has the group Pro English. Mm -hmm. Loads of good materials there. Uh, Kate Canon, she's their friends, both from Smolensk. Kate Canon is the leader of Teacher Switcher. She's great at developing materials for uh, uh, young learners, very colorful. And uh, we were at Trendy 8 together this weekend. So, for example, I know they've prepared lots of materials for uh, the upcoming Christmas. Mm -hmm. They had prepared materials as well for Halloween and for Thanksgiving. That's done now. I can't hear you. Oh, wait, I'm sorry for that. I'm just unmuted. So, yes, I, as I was saying, I highly recommend those groups if you're looking for more detailed. Uh, approaches to that, I highly recommend them. I know they've prepared some very good materials for Christmas. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, I'm not actually speaking about the uh, some cultural peculiarities, yes, uh, but as well about it. But uh, uh, in general, how to be polite, how to conduct the conversation, uh, uh, I don't know, in a proper way with different categories of listeners and speakers. So I'm speaking about uh, this approach and maybe uh, so do you have any materials or patterns uh, that can you uh, that you can offer actually actually it's 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 uh, it's very good that you brought it up because Tom and I are working right now on uh, different materials for degrees of formality and um, familiarity yes of course so we have so that that I agree with you I absolutely agree with you um, we're, we're, we're going to put students in different situations. It's going to be similar to this brainstorm activity. The brainstorm activity does not have uh, uh, clues for students because the whole point is to put them uh, on the spot. But we're working on different activities for uh, decreasing formality, increasing formality. Mm -hmm. Students need to feel that. I fully agree. Last week, I was speaking to some IT guys preparing their new course on soft skills for next year. And one student brought up, asked me um, about specific things like that, formality. I, I do like to remind students when, when, if they're too focused on that, the problem is that in, in, in a second language, uh, students feel less sure of themselves and they want to understand every little detail, every nuance. But I found a very good way of reassuring my students last week on that. They were, they were concerned about difference in formality, in vocabulary, in England, in America. And uh, I asked them very simply, I know there's also difference in vocabulary between St. Petersburg and Moscow. It's true. I remember there was a, a, a whole campaign of ads in St. Petersburg. For, I think it was for RGD, or maybe it was for a bank that had mm -hmm. some funny peculiarities like that between St. Petersburg Russian and Moscow Russian. Oh. So there is a difference. I agree it's not that huge, but I asked my students very, very directly, you're from St. Petersburg. Are you afraid of not understanding people if you go to Moscow? Mm -hmm. Of course not. Because in our L1, we don't, need, we don't need to think so much about how to say things, and we focus on communication strategies. Even if we don't know a word in our L1, we'll either guess from context, or we'll, we'll be very comfortable asking, asking the other person what that means. 
students struggle a bit more with that in English and we're going to work on activities for that. Mm -hmm. So as I said, coming back to implying in English, I highly recommend brainstorm activity. Use the strategies and as well the perfect tenses for implying in English right here. These are different activities as well for students to play with perfect tenses, okay? Look at the implications. I haven't been to that new French cafe. What can you what can you understand? Either the person he might be hungry, he might like trying new things, he might want to go to that cafe right now. And we do the same thing with past and future. In future, the robot will have ironed all of my clothes. What does that imply? I'll be ready to get dressed and leave for work. My clothes will look good for the big speech. A lot of different things we can imply. So I highly recommend these P1 type activities. And now for speaking, I highly recommend this. Oblivious, offended, accepting. So this activity, you can really play with loads of different levels. The activity gives students practice in implying when approaching a more sensitive topic. They're going to, on each card, there's going to be something a bit sensitive that they want to tell the other person. And they're going to have to play with their English to do that. You can give the other student a die and kind of an instruction how to react. So for example, if they have a die, you tell the student one, two, oblivious, three, four, offended, five, six, accepting. And you see, for oblivious, student B acts as if he or she doesn't understand what in the world A is talking about. For offended, B becomes offended. <clears throat> the, the, this will be a bit of a, a conflict situation. And for accepting, B just clarifies the situation and acts in a grateful way trying to solve the problem. You don't have to give your students a die. You can tell them to react in an absolute natural manner. Let's have a look at a few cards. <clears throat> Tell your partner that his or her girlfriend or boyfriend is no good for him or her. Make your person understand that his or her clothes are not good for formal situations. Try to make your partner understand that he or she isn't a good listener. Oh, look at the one right under there. People think your partner is a jerk. Make him or her understand that. All right? Students are going to play a lot with their English here. It's a great opportunity for students to be creative with their English. They can use perfect tenses. They can use conditionals, loads of different types of vocabulary to imply exactly that without stating it. And student B can play on different types of reactions. There's a very similar activity called softening the blow. This is where students have to deliver bad news, but in a more positive light. It's implying as well, but I highly recommend to check out our activities on sugarcoating before, because this is another uh, soft skill, another communicative skill that is very important for students to be able to master mm -hmm. how to deliver bad information in a more positive light. It's called sugarcoating. I have to. And, sorry? I have to do two things. To, I think to use one bed and to, one is good. What shall I start with? I, I didn't catch that. Joke. You... Anton, it's a Russian joke. Oh, I didn't hear. I'm sorry. Yes. Last activity I want to show you today a partner in crime. Wow. This is a lot of fun. So <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a weird context, but <clears throat> student A takes a crime card. I'll show you the crime card afterwards. He or she wants to commit that crime, mm -hmm. and he or she wants to recruit student B to be part of the operation. 
Mm -hmm. A should mention the business indirectly because B could be A, wearing a wire. He could be a goody two shoes that never does anything bad and might tell either the teacher or the cops. Or C, interested but cautious. It is a, it is a crime. So the one, two, three, four, you can play it with a die to give student B some, uh, some more guidance. And here you have, you want to cheat the lottery. You want to steal some TVs from a big warehouse. We're not recommending, we're not pushing our students to do that. But you see, in this context, it gives students a clear scenario where they want to imply without being too direct. I've played this activity with loads of students, teenagers, adults, it always works like a charm and students really get into the whole idea of implying without saying directly. So I highly recommend that activity as well. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that's everything I wanted to show you this week. We're going to have, because of, because of, no, it's, it's, it's thanks to Trendy. Uh, we had a great weekend, but I didn't have the opportunity to give you a, a, a webinar last weekend. So we're going to have another webinar quite soon. And shall I continue our, our, our webinars, devoting part of our webinars on soft skills? because we have loads of activities on our website on that. And really, it's a great way for you to, your students are gonna shine, but your students are gonna see, also see you shine. They're going to, they, they, when I reuse these activities in, 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 in classroom, you become more than just a teacher. Your, your students gain a new level of respect for you and they, they love participating in activities. They entirely see the benefit and they're going to, they're going to work. So more soft skills I see, yes, in the chat? Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. I'll continue on soft skills, right? So next week, or maybe even this weekend, we'll see. I'll invite you to another webinar and I'll continue expanding on the soft skills. I noted down the degrees of formality. I'll put that in top priority then because we have started. We have, we have a few things, uh, especially you wanted models yes? for students. Degrees of formality will continue on soft skills. Is there anything else that you need for your lessons? Yeah. Um, Any new requests for Tom and me? No, we'll think about it, maybe. Think about it. You know you can always write me an email. Okay. All right. Let me know if you have anything specific uh -huh. that you need help with. It can be uh, 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 how to teach it, and we'll shoot a video on that. Uh, it can be more activities to automate skills. You know, we love building reflexes. We love designing games for that, activities for that. More speaking activities on specific target languages, you let me know. Mm -hmm. You can always email me. And remember that on our website, you can also message me. Okay, just go to messages, inbox. I'm the first right there, Antoine Mark. All right? Okay. Please do write to me. You can write to Tom, but it'll go faster if you write to me directly, okay? I'm gathering the requests and putting them into uh, uh, our system with Tom, all right? Okay. You can still message Tom and give him nice, and tell, him he's, tell him he's doing a good job. He'll appreciate it. Okay. Oh, All right. All right. If you have no more requests, then I'll say goodbye for today and catch you very soon.
beginning of next week, I think. All yes. right. All right, Tom. This time. Bye. All right. Bye, bye, everyone. Have a good evening. Yes, thank you. You too. And I hope those soft skills were inspiring. For sure. All right. I see more a request as well for more automated. I'll do that. Tatiana, feel free to write me if you have any specific uh, target language that you want to automate, OK? All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Enjoy your Thursday evening, right? Yes, Thursday evening. Enjoy your Thursday evening. The weekend is coming soon. Yes. Bye-bye, okay, everyone. Bye.